Timing is everything. What exactly do I mean when I say this? It sounds like one of those empty cliches you hear from your grandparents. They can't quite explain what it means, but it seems fitting at that time, so they just graciously repeat it. But if we thought about our personal lives, I'm sure we've had experiences where things would just come together and fall into place. And normally, when these things happen, we attribute them to luck. We say things like, this will never happen again. You know, I was just in the right place at the right time, which is fine. But then we never take time to think about time itself. And normally when I say this, I get laughed at. And they say, Lorenzo, well, how important do you think time is? Well, today, I'm going to share with you a personal story, along with some research that was conducted in our lab, that suggests, yes, timing really is everything. <coughs> So when I was 16, I hit this rebellious stage in my life. I knew everything. I didn't like rules. And you just couldn't tell me anything. And some people today would say, I'm still a little stubborn. But at 16, it was, I had it in space. I mean, you truly just couldn't tell me anything. So I decided that I would move away from my grand grandmother's house in Chicago to Green Bay, Wisconsin with my brother. And here I thought I would be able to live a, a less disciplined lifestyle. And I wanted to get away with all the tempting things that teenagers wanted to do at that age. And I'll leave it to your creative imagination to think about <laughs> what those things are. But at 16, I had it all figured out. Except I was wrong in just about every way imaginable. Moving from inner city Chicago to Green Bay, Wisconsin, that is to say, from an all-black school to a predominantly white school, it was the toughest transition that I've ever had to make. It was a culture shock. I had no friends. I didn't fit in. And that whole idea that I was going to live a less disciplined lifestyle, that didn't quite pan out how I envisioned either. <laughs> so here I sat, and I was wondering if the move from Chicago to Green Bay was even worth it. But I know everything, and I'm too proud to admit I made a mistake. But you know what they say. Pain can teach you a lesson that pride just won't let you learn. So I slipped into a depression, and my grades suffered. I, hate, I had behavioral problems in schools. And as this behavior continued to escalate, I was on the verge of being dismissed from school. And I remember this being just the darkest time of my life. I remember just desperately wanting the day to end and just never start again in the morning. And just as my life began to spiral out of control, the school psychologist stepped in to lend a hand. She pulled me aside, she sits me in her office, and she says, Lorenzo, you're so smart. You have so much potential. And I remember thinking to myself, they must pay you a lot of money to say these things. <laughs> and I don't know how much she made, but I figured that if the other students were half as bad as I was, then she had her work cut out for her every day, and she was worth her weight in gold. And she, nevertheless, she diligently worked with me to get me back on track to graduate. And so my grades started to improve. Visits to the principal office became less frequent. And I would eventually go on to graduate from Preble High School. And today, I can't help but think about the impeccable timing of her efforts and how drastically different my life would look had she not stepped in at that particular time. And no, in no small effort, and no small part due to her efforts, I was able to then go on and graduate from UWGB. And today, I stand before you as a neuroscience PhD candidate at Washington University in St. Louis. <laughs> Knowing how important time was for me early on in my life, I decided that I would want to study with Dr. Eric Herzog, a world-renowned circadian biologist. And this is actually, circadian biology is actually a field that's been getting a lot of press lately. Last year, the three scientists that unraveled and discovered the molecular mechanisms that control circadian rhythms were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. But what are circadian rhythms? Well, when you first hear it, you think of sleep. And rightfully so, 
circadian rhythms. I mean, sleep is a circadian rhythm. But more generally, circadian rhythms could be defined as any behavioral or physiological process that follows a 24-hour cycle. So things like body temperature, hormone secretion, metabolism, digestion, these are all things that follow a 24-hour cycle and would therefore be considered circadian. So then how does this actually play out? Like, how does this play out every day? Well, you've probably heard of this idea that one of the easiest ways to lose weight, easy ways to lose weight, is to simply not eat two to three hours before you go to bed. And part of the reason, so if you didn't want to exercise and you didn't want to change your diet, one of the ways you could lose weight is simply not eat before you go to bed. And one of the reasons that this is true is because your metabolism is also on a circadian rhythm. So calories that are consumed right before you go to bed are actually more likely to be stored as fat. So this is just one way circadian rhythms play out in everyday life. But you may be wondering, well, how exactly are these things regulated? Well, it turns out that you have these things called clock genes. We call them clock genes. And their sole purpose is to simply keep track of time and generate 24-hour rhythms in every cell in your body. So this cycle that we see on the board, this feedback loop, is a 24-hour cycle. And as researchers, we can actually measure the activity of these genes. And when we plot them, what we see is a nice oscillating rhythm that it repeats itself day in and day out. And as researchers, we can go in and we can delete these clock genes. And when we delete these clock genes, the arrhythm is ablated. And these genes is the core, core machinery to regulate circadian rhythms throughout the entire body. And so if we were to go back to think about the most pervasive circadian rhythm, sleep, late at night, the pineal gland up in the brain secretes this hormone, melatonin, and it's implicated in sleep. And as you start to fall asleep late in the evening, it starts to be secreted, and then it peaks in the middle of the night. And then right when you wake up, as you begin to wake up, the levels come down, and it, prom it promotes wakefulness. And this, this program is what's responsible for generating your sleep-wake cycle. Unless you're a college student, then there's some other factors <laughs> that generate your sleep-wake cycle. So, one of the things that our lab was interested in was given that every cell and every organ in your body has this timekeeping system that gives it an optimal time of day for functioning. The question that we wanted to ask was, can we take advantage of this timekeeping system to treat diseases that affect these various organs? And so, in our lab, we study the most fascinating organ in the human body, the most fascinating piece of matter in the universe, and that is the human brain. And in particular, we study glioblastoma. And it's, you've probably heard of this in the news recently. It's the same disease that claimed the life of Senator John McCain. And it's the most common and aggressive brain cancer in adults. There's about 9,000 new cases each year. And as a sign of how aggressive this is, once patients are diagnosed with this disease, they usually die within a year to 15, 12 to 15 months. So again, our lab wanted to know, can we take advantage of the timekeeping system in these glioblastoma cells to open up a window of opportunity to treat glioblastoma? So we approached this problem the exact same way I described earlier. We took these glioblastoma cells and we tracked the circadian rhythm. And what we did was we took a TMZ, which is a chemotherapy drug, kills cancer cells, and we applied it, once we clocked the activity, we applied it at the falling phase, at the trough, at the rising phase, and at the peak of the circadian cycle. And we used the same concentration of the drug, and the question was, does this drug act differently at different times of day? Surprisingly, when we administered this drug, what we saw is that the trough of the circadian cycle you saw a fourfold increase in drug effectiveness. And so this suggests that this drug works in a time-dependent manner. And so now remember I told you earlier, we can go in and use genetic technology 
to essentially break the clock genes. And then we repeat these experiments and we ask the question, once we render these cells timeless, they have no sense, of, they have no sense or idea of what time of day it is, does this drug still display a time-dependent sensitivity? So when we genetically deleted the clock, no surprise, the circadian rhythm is completely ablated. But when we look to see about the effectiveness of the drug, we, didn't, we no longer saw the time dependence at the trough, suggesting that this drug does work in a time dependent manner. So this has huge implications. The chemotherapy drugs that we use today to treat cancer patients, they kill the cancer cells, but they also kill the healthy cells, and they're usually toxic for the patient. And so what this research is implying is that the tools to treat these deadly diseases may be right in front of us, sitting right in front of us, and maybe we should consider the time in which we use them. So this is research that has now been published and now it's in the phase of clinical trials. And we're trying to figure out if we can improve the quality of life or out outcomes of patients who are suffering from glioblastoma, one of the deadliest, most aggressive cancers in existence. So you ask me, Lorenzo, how important can time be? Well, even if it's something as simple as falling asleep at night, to restoring hope and rescuing a child from inner city Chicago, all the way up to something extreme, like treating a deadly malignant brain cancer. Timing is everything. Thank you. <laughs>